Hey everybody, welcome in Surprise here with Red Print, an amazing band that has been kind enough to join me for an interview. Thank you for joining me. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, do you mind introducing you yourselves? <laughs> hmm? um, the band. My name is Linda. Um, I am the singer of Red Print and I also play the violin. I'm Milan. I play bass and make stupid videos on uh, Facebook. Uh, and I'm Ronald. I uh, play the guitar and, and act in the stupid video. <laughs> <laughs> and hug trees. <laughs> hug trees. And where are you based out of? Uh, Bergen op Zoom in the, the Netherlands. So I know that you began around 2012, if I'm correct, as the plan. And you've changed your name to Red Print last year. So what is the name meaning and what's the process of the name change? Um, the meaning behind Red Print um, actually has multiple meanings. One of it is uh, considered a new start. And the other one is considered um, the actual, what was it again? Back in the day, if you had something that was going to be printed, um, it had to do with value. I I completely forgot. The, the first original. draft uh, was a red print or something. Really yeah, different. it's about the first draft, something about that. And it yeah. has to do with new beginnings, but still keeping the same um, importance. And that's how we ended up picking this name um, and we honestly only changed our name because there were a million the plans on Spotify and, <laughs> and we just wanted to make sure that we weren't going to get drowned in the sea of names. There are two red prints on Spotify and uh, the other one is totally different and has one song. Yep. So tell me about some of your influences and heroes growing up it could be it could be musical or non but just just tell me about some of those I'll look at you you're the the man with all the names influences <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah i i think we're very influenced by 80s 90s walks uh, if you look at the music uh we're, we're like that the 70 bands that start playing and never stops. That's basically what's also happening in uh, our music. We just start jamming and then, yeah, we'll write something about it. So, uh, yeah. I think the biggest uh, influences and heroes are the, the artists of the covers we used to play before we had the original uh, songs. And, and I think those influenced us the most. Well, that actually leads into my next question. Uh, a lot of times I like to ask bands what cover they'd like to put on record, but I know that you started as a cover band. So instead I'll ask you, what was your favorite cover to play and why? <laughs> Still our favorite cover. I don't know. It's, it's probably a Stranglehold yeah. by Ted Nugent. It's we... uh, one of the few covers we still play. And people never realize that we're actually playing a cover. They're like, oh, I love the song. And it's like... Uh, it was a cover, but thanks. <laughs> but yeah, should you really call it a cover because it's basically just a jam session with some vocal lines? Basically, so, uh, it's a great 10 minute filler. Yeah, you guys have you done very much touring? Um, and if you have, what is some of your favorite tours and or venues to play at? I wish we would tour more. Yes, yeah. we wish we would tour more. We have uh, people who work, we have people with families, and uh, it makes it harder for us to actually go further away to play gigs. I mean, the furthest we've played so far was in Belgium, like like um, Lem Limburg. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half drive. Yeah, hour and a half away, but if we want to go further, we get into trouble when, when it comes to people who have to work and people who have families and want to see their children. And depending on what opportunities lie ahead for us, maybe we will go further away because we do really 
want to gain more experience on the broader spectrum. But it has to be worth it because uh, we could play a gig in uh, Groningen. Uh, that's a three hour drive for a half an hour gig. And that's just not worth it. Unless they pay you an insane amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's totally three hour that. drive and three hours back for 30 or 45 minutes uh, playtime. That's, yeah, it's, an, it's not worth it. I mean, for Dutch people, that is a long drive, but <laughs> Americans are yeah. like, no, 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 I do that every week. <laughs> I drove three hours last night to go see Tripping Daisy. So that's what I mean. <laughs> it's peanuts for you guys. <laughs> As I was in the same state the whole drive, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. you can drive our country in 12 hours, I believe. The entire country. Uh, it's possible. You drive around probably circles. stuck in traffic for six. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. There's a lot of traffic here, too, so I understand that. You guys are known for your interesting videos. They're very comical. They're very fun. They're, you, you have a lot of good ideas when it comes to those. But some people don't actually realize just how good you are when they listen to your music because all they know you from is your viral videos. Tell me what you would say to those people that have seen the videos but not necessarily listened to the music. How would you describe your music to them? That's a good question. <laughs> I always struggle to say like, hey, this is the genre we play. I always feel like um, we're not necessarily playing our own favorite genre. We're playing a combination of everybody's favorite genre. I think that um, when it comes to the depth of the lyrics, um, I really try to make sure that everybody who listens to it um, feels something about their own lives, their own experiences, um, to make sure, like I write about my experiences and I wanna make sure that someone else can relate to that. I think that's something that I would say and describing the music itself, I'd be like, I don't even know what the fuck it is. So maybe, <laughs> maybe just give it a listen and judge for yourself and just hope that people enjoy. Yeah. yeah. It, it has a lot of different influences like it is a bit progressive it is yeah those uh symphonic uh stuff with the violin of course but yeah the it spacey. also sounds a bit yeah spacey with with the effects so it's hard to really describe it as one genre i think it's just you have to listen to it and uh, yeah and the songs are all uh different they they do uh yeah connect to each other but if you you can't compare immersion with color me insane there are different songs or heard it's, it's just a, a a rock song uh color me insane is probably a blues in a score uh, but immersion or uh telephone they're, they're totally different and you can hear, hear the <clears throat> It's the same sound. You can hear it's from the same band, but it's they're not similar songs. Yeah. And one thing I would say to anybody that's watching this that may not have heard your music, go listen, because it is actually... I felt bad saying that it was surprisingly good, but when I listened to it, I was like, oh, I didn't expect it to be that good. I, I, you know, Like I said, I know it sounds rude to say that, but it was just very surprisingly good, and I think that more people should be listening. Thanks, and uh, no offense yeah. taken. <laughs> uh, and I have to uh, give a shout out to the the studio we recorded. Yeah. Because he is amazing with uh, what he does. With yeah. the, the mixing and mastering. Uh, I was surprised. Yeah, he really uh, did a, lot, uh, a good job. I also see you so, guys uh, showing a lot of love to your independent friends online. Um, you guys are pretty big in the independent scene. I love to see it. Who's somebody in that scene that you would love to play with or maybe even do or like a mini tour with just to spend some time with? We do have a few gigs uh, planned, as in we are planning them uh, with a few bands. Um, yeah, but those are local bands. Those are local bands. Yeah. But... I think um, most of those bands are from the States. No, no, no. Uh, uh, England, Germany. Uh, okay. I, I would love to play with uh, Barrelos Band. 
uh, I, I think he's amazing and very supportive. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, There's so many, um, but there are many um, great artists out there that are actually solo. They sound like a band, but they're actually solo artists, so you can't really gig with them. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. At the moment, I'm completely obsessed with the Happy Fits, and I think it would be so cool to have like, um, like a jam session with those guys. Just see how we can combine our two styles and make one hell of a song. That would be cool. Yeah, here at Surprise yep. Radio, we we love to support the independent. So I love to see all the support that you guys give, and um, I thought it'd be fun to see, you know, like I said, who you think you would fit with, or or something like that. Um, on a lighter note, I know that you guys did mention that you have families and you you spend a lot of time making music. But what's some of your other passions that you like to get into? TV shows, movies, books, games, outdoor stuff, anything like that? I I have a bunch. Um... I uh, organize a, a charity concert every year together. Like as our band, we organize a charity concert every year. And um, I also um, organize a, a living museum. And I don't know if that's something that's well known to you, but um, it originated in America, in New York, actually. And um eventually it was brought to the Netherlands and it it spread through a bunch of countries and it's basically an an art museum where everybody is allowed to be themselves you don't necessarily have to have a backpack to come there but it is um centered around healing yourself by making art or by being amongst people etc and I'm also organizing that um, with the help of a local uh, um, mental health institution to make sure that we have another one in the Netherlands that people can go to. Um, and yeah, making art myself. I love doing it as well. And I can keep going forever. And ever yeah, really. yeah. I have uh, two kids. Uh, uh, one is disabled. So there are a handful. And um, yeah, well, I don't know, TV shows, uh, plenty if I have the time to watch them. <laughs> yeah, so uh, making yeah, steak I... on the barbecue. <laughs> oh, yeah, making steak on the barbecue. <laughs> That's a very, very good hobby. And eating it, of course. <laughs> yeah, and I, I like to visit a lot of uh, concerts, festivals, uh, just to look at the live bands. And also, uh, yeah, play some uh, games, uh, watch some movies uh, on the couch. It's also uh, nice. And I'm also a big theme park fan, so <laughs> travel the world around uh, riding roller coasters. That's fun. Yeah. Have any of you ever been to America and tried any of their theme parks just by chance? Not yeah. yet. You have? Yeah. Really? Where have you gone? Where have you been? To Florida to uh, oh. visit uh, Walt Disney World, uh, Universal, and also to the West Coast, uh, visiting uh, the original uh, Disneyland and oh, the cool. theme parks there, Six Flags, uh, Magic Mountain. So, yeah. Oh, very but, cool. That's fun. Tell me about any upcoming tours, singles, EPs, anything like that that you can tease. We are uh, about to, uh, uh, in August 17, we're going to hit the studio again, record at least two new tracks. Uh, maybe we will uh, record one cover. Or we could redo Color Me Insane. We haven't decided yet. Yeah. Because Color Me Insane was, uh, it wasn't ready when we recorded. <clears throat> But it was too good not to record. Yeah. So when we play it live now, we have a. Extended. It's longer. It's it, it has a different ending. Extended version. <laughs> yeah. And that includes the video version. That's still the the pre the previous version, not the finished for product. Uh, the 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 video. It, it is on YouTube in the in the live gig. 
okay yeah, those are that's from a, a radio performance that we did and we uploaded some of the video footage oh also Hoover Live. So oh yeah and also Hoover complete, Live, yeah. Uh, uh, gig is on there there's some live videos and stuff uh from live gigs yeah thought i'd ask kind of a fun and silly question if you guys because i'm a nerd is why i'm asking it's just honestly me if you guys could have a superpower what would it be um i've always dreamt about flying just the most generic skill there is um but that that's always been my dream ever since i was little um <laughs> taking away the parts where you would be eating a million flies but <laughs> <laughs> Just I I don't know the the, the sense of the the wind in uh, around my body and the fact that I could just be like extra lazy because I am already <laughs> the most lazy person that I know <laughs> and just be like oh I want to go over there and I'm gone. That would be awesome. The weight superpower is playing like Jacob a superpower. <laughs> what kind of superpower? <laughs> Play bass like Jacob. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, hey, that's that that is a, a I'm sure that there's a, a super person out there that can mimic, you know, talents and stuff like that. So that's a superpower. Hell yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Play like any uh, Asian kids. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, I like to give everybody a chance to kind of just talk to the crowd or the viewers right now. Um, tell us about what, what something like you did a few minutes ago about your uh, your museums. Tell us something that we may not know, or just tell us why we should be listening to the music and anything. The floor is open to you now. Well, like I said, if um, for whatever reason, if you are a music lover, um, then check our music out for sure. Um, but I I especially want to point out that. People who might be struggling with mental health, like I am, might really feel like they can relate to our music. Um, so I would be like a shout out to them. And when it comes to the style of music, apparently we fit in the indie category. So whoever is enjoying new, wacky, weird stuff, I <laughs> would say check us out as well. Um, I would say uh, don't just stream music but listen to the music yeah uh, the same goes not not just for us but for uh, uh, all the amazing artists uh, out there definitely there are some real gems out there uh, yeah. and, and sometimes you it, it's in the background streaming and, and you can't really listen but when you get the chance really listen to the music and be surprised uh, often i uh, i hear people like oh oh it's an indie band uh, that that reaction because uh, like oh you're a nobody but everybody was a nobody at some point and uh, we don't have to make it huge but uh, i know i don't know you should really? just listen to the music and uh, not judge it by uh, the fact that you'd never heard of something. Uh, we also just really like being part of the community, especially like Milan is really good at keeping in contact with so many bands, um, not just in the Netherlands, but in America, uh, so many countries. And it, it's become this little community of we share their music, they share our music and everybody shows like mutual appreciation and there's nothing but kindness and love yeah, there. I, I, I am amazed by the the community we stumbled into. Yeah. <clears throat> the uh, the the love we get uh it's it's inspiring to uh make more to return it. Yeah. Uh I, it's it's no it's it's really amazing. I definitely agree with that. That's one of the reasons why I try really hard to interview um, or play or shine the spotlight on all these um, independent artists, especially the ones that are helping others 
for no gain of their own just because they believe in you just as much as you believe in them. And it's very reciprocal, very good. And I just wish that people, like you said, would actually stop putting a label on it as, as indie and therefore it must be bad. Or if you say local band or um, anything like that, it just all of a sudden it turns people off. And I'm like, you know, I've, I've often said there's nothing against the big bands out there, the big name, the major label bands out there. But I've heard music doing my show with nothing but independent music that's better than anything I've heard on the terrestrial radio in years. So you're absolutely right on that. Uh, Ronald, what about you? Do you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, yeah, I think Milan said already a lot. The only thing I want to add is that if you like something, don't be uh, afraid to to let them know because it's always nice to have yeah, good reactions on your music, on your uh, videos, on something. So, yeah, that's really great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Thank you for small, all that. It's a small effort to like, share, or comment on uh, on something yeah. you like. Uh, people often overlook that, but it's really important. N not not just for us, but yeah, all for everyone. All the bands, yeah. Show the love. <laughs> Don't yeah. be a hater. <laughs> uh, when it comes to your music, do you have a favorite song that you like to sing or play? I think everybody has their diff a different favorite because they are more focused on the playing aspect of it and their personal instrument. And for me, that's mostly <clears throat> my voice, but also my violin, but mostly for my voice. Um. I don't know. I think for me, Color Me Insane is one of my favorites to sing. Um, and um, we're, we're currently working on a new song that I think is going to be really hilarious once it's finished. And I think that might be my runner up when it comes to future favorites. <laughs> no, I don't know which one you're referring to. I'm talking about stoner song. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Gotta love Actually, a good tease. Uh, we have a working title for it. It was uh, Radio Destination uh, named it. Yeah, Gotta love a good tease. That we would name a song Dave, and instead, of, like they said, I think it's called Dave. And instead of taking just Dave, we decided to keep the entire thing and be like, no, I think it's called Dave. <laughs> That's the working title for now. But we're not going to record it yet because it's. No. Uh, in it's not two ready. early stages to uh, to record, and we already booked the studio. So, and our uh, re rehearsal room uh, closes in the summer for six weeks. Oh wow! So we have one left. Yeah. And then uh, we are out. But I do think that's my runner-up favorite. Like once it's finished, I think. Oh, well, it's certainly different from the rest. Yeah. Yeah, it is. What about you, you guys? Do you have a favorite to to play? It's yeah. a tough one. I think it would be immersion. Yeah, I think but so as well. Could also be color me insane because that track just rocks. I gotta yeah. ask, as a bass player, are you gonna give us any bass solos? <laughs> uh, probably. So it's not. one. Uh, <laughs> color me insane, right? You have to write it in the notations. Nah, More bass solos. Color me insane. That's just uh, the intro. I mean, yeah. we do have a lot of bass openings where the bass gets highlighted a lot. I, I think uh, our music is already pretty bass heavy. <laughs> in, in general. Uh, but there is uh, one track we are about to record. Uh, it's called Runaway. Uh, you can already hear it in the, on YouTube. <clears throat> because we played it live, but um, this is—I I think it's an interesting bass line, but you can't really hear it in the in, in the YouTube because it's recorded with a phone and it's it's pretty decent but not that good. But I, I think it's an interesting bass line, uh, in general, in the in the verse and in the chorus. Uh, but it's not a solo. Uh, Red print. That. Thank you so much for joining me today. This was an absolute pleasure, and I wish you all the success in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.